Hello, I'm Miranda Mizzen, Director of Equities Research at Tab Group, and I'm joined today by Professor Mike Aitken, who is CEO and Chief Scientist at the Capital Markets Cooperative Research Center. Mike, gonna, hello, thank you for stopping by. Good to a see pleasure. you. Pleasure. And we've been talking a lot recently on Tab Forum about quality in the markets. And one of the questions that comes up that we touched on last time you were here, Mike, is how do you evaluate the changes in the design of market structure and what impact they have on the market? And this is obviously an area you've been doing a lot in. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the things you've, you've been doing and how you define quality and integrity in the marketplace and how you look at it? If you think about a marketplace, it's five fundamental subsystems, technology, regulation, information, participants, and instruments. Yep. And we can change any of these things at any time. The party who's required to sign off on these changes, generally, is the regulator. So it's important to understand what their mandate is. And their mandate is very, very specific to ensure that markets are fair and efficient. So regulators are not really supposed to sign off on anything that is not fair and efficient. Uh, and so naturally, what we've done is we've see, sought to um, define and measure fairness and efficiency. Many people really only, when they're looking at market design changes, only look at uh, efficiency and then only at liquidity. So let me go back a step and say that uh, we define an efficient market as one in which it's cheap to trade and in which the price at which you're trading reflects all available information. So therefore, obviously, we need to measure transactions costs and price discovery, sometimes referred to as liquidity and volatility. Mm -hmm. um, um, at the same time, we, uh, we define uh, market integrity as the extent to which parties um, engage in prohibited trading behaviours, and there are three of these, insider trading, uh, market manipulation, and broker-client conflict, of which front-running is an example. So the point is that if you want to understand the implications of a market design change, you've got to understand how it affects transactions cost how it affects price discovery, how it affects insider trading, how it affects market manipulation, and how it affects broker-client conflict. So there's five fundamental factors you need to be looking at in order bef before you can begin to really get a, a handle on whether a market design change is good or bad for a marketplace. So generally, when you know, market structure design changes are you know, either asked for or, or demanded or, or you know, put in place by the regulator, do you think um, regulators in general are looking across those five factors or it, it tends to have this sort of waterbed effect where there's always one piece that's going to be out of kilter because it's such a delicate ecosystem. Yeah, as I alluded to before, the, uh, when people look at market design changes, particularly academics, who uh, uh, typical academics I suppose, that um, where regulators take their lead sometimes, they're primarily looking at efficiency and then primarily looking at liquidity. They're not some, we're beginning to look at price discovery, but none of us look at, pri at market integrity. Uh, and so therefore, how can you understand market design change uh, if, you, if you don't look at the, the other side of the coin, um, if you don't look at the fairness in the marketplace? Right. The mandate is to ensure that markets are fair and efficient, not efficient and efficient, fair and efficient. And you're looking at that from an evidence-based policy as Indeed. opposed to an opinion-based. So right? what we need to do is define what we mean by fair and efficient mm -hmm. and come up with measurement proxies for fairness and efficiency and then look at how those things change when market design change. This is obviously a framework you've been you're working on for a, for a while and you're now um, applying that framework in the Canadian market. So can you give us a little insight as to where you've been applying that and some of the results that you're finding? Sure. I mean. Obviously, you can't use this framework very well if, if the change hasn't occurred somewhere before. So a very interesting change occurred in Canada recently, and that was the, um, the decision to impose a messaging tax um, in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so obviously, because this is the first place where it's really been, um, it's been put on, we thought there's a good chance to try and look at the framework. So we started off by looking at the impact of, the, of this messaging tax on efficiency. Uh, in particular looking at liquidity. Because if either, if any of these five elements go down, we argue that it's uh, suboptimal. Um, so in this particular case, we looked at the uh, implications of the messaging tax just for liquidity. Um, and regrettably what we find is that the efficiency of the marketplace, uh, as reflected in liquidity, goes down uh, in the wake of the introduction of the messaging tax. 
And you've also introduced this uh, messaging tax in Australia recently, but still it's early days to see the results. Yeah, the messaging tax was introduced in January, but what we did find, I mean, we need to leave three to four months until we see the full consequences right. of these changes. But what we did see is we saw an, a, a, an immediate change in Australia from roughly 10, tr 10 orders per trade to eight. So it dropped about 20% overnight. Wow. Do you think do you have any thoughts on whether that might recover or that's, that's the new status quo or too early to tell? I think, it's, yeah, it's too early to tell. Uh, I mean, we're studying this on an ongoing basis, um, but it, it shows that um, regulatory decisions have impact. And the question is, uh, regulators like everyone else have to live up to their own mandate to ensure that the decisions they take enhance the fairness and efficiency of the marketplace. In this particular case, it did not appear to enhance the efficiency of the marketplace. So they perhaps need to look at that. I mean, more recently, we've been looking at another decision taken in the uh, Canadian marketplace, that is to ensure that you have price improvement when you go to the dark. Right. And we show that that's been a very positive thing for the quality of the markets in Canada. So in this particular case, two new changes. One doesn't appear to be good for the market. The other appears to be good for the market. So we're one all, I guess. That, that'll be, <laughs> this will be interesting to watch because the, uh, you know, the, the, there's definitely a lot of interest in Canada because of those changes going on at the minute um, to see you know, whether other countries ought to be following suit and seeing some of that data coming out. So your timeliness is really interesting. So we'll keep tabs on that. So thank you for sharing for that. So we're going to nice. leave it there. Um, I'm Miranda Mizzen, I'm Director of Equities Research at Tab Group, and I was joined today by Professor Mike Aitken, CEO and Chief Scientist at the Capital Markets Cooperative Research Centre. Mike, thank you. Thank you.